I don't edit. I actually don't. That's not a part of the process that I enjoy, the, the technical side of it, the sitting down. And, and I don't think I'll ever edit my own work, but I really admire people who, who do and who do it well. Such a vital part of the process, especially in documentary. Monica and David, because it was my first film, and again, I didn't go to film school, so I didn't have, although I had seen a lot of films, and I could think a lot about what made a powerful story and, and what a completed film might look like, I really had never gone through this process. So I didn't have in mind um, a structure that I thought would follow. I, of course, there were certain things that were obvious. I knew that we had a wedding, which is a very universal uh, big moment. The challenge was that we started with something that potentially would be the climax of most stories, particularly in this circumstance where you have two people with intellectual disabilities who are doing this thing that so many of us take for granted, but which is incredibly groundbreaking um, in their world. And so that bit, the biggest challenge is that I had, we had the, the team, we, we started with what should have been the climax of the film. And I actually did not know what the rest of the film was going, to, was going to be. I did think when I started out, although I didn't, there was no script, there wasn't an outline, you know, story-wise. And I think that's, you know, the strength and a very to filmmaking, it's very much a fly on the wall experience. You don't know what's gonna happen. And there was no probing or staging, or it really was, there was a lot of persistence. There's a lot of going back on the day to day and just looking for those little moments within their routine. And in the meantime, kind of taking a step back and always thinking about, well, what's happening in terms of a, of a bigger story. But I did early on assume that we would be following a move towards more independence. And that is something that I was looking for when we would go and shoot kind of some of that tension and, um, and, it, and it didn't happen. So there were surprises. There was a move that happened while they were making, while we were making the film. And at the time it felt just like, um, you know, a nightmare because there was gonna be no more consistency, right? Anything we had filmed before the move had to happen in a certain time and everything that happened after the move was just, we would have to stick to certain chronology. It turned out that the element that for a while I was most terrified of from a storytelling perspective ended up being a really useful story device because Monica and David, because we had established and spent so much time in the minutia of the everyday and filming their routine, when the move happened, it really was this really wonderful foil for, for, for their inner world and the way that their minds work and, and the way that emotionally they've, they structure their lives. And, and just the fact that they really want structure. So Monica and David are very habit driven. They, um, they want things to be the same way and to have a fair amount of routine and everything was completely disrupted. And we just didn't anticipate, I should have, but somehow I didn't anticipate just how much of a moment that was gonna be for both of them, especially for her. And I, there's a moment in the film where she's just walking around her empty bedroom and pulling out the drawers and just saying, I don't get it, where is everything? And, and even though she had logically, she had helped pack her things and she had been an active part of preparing the move, there was still something about going back into her bedroom. And it's those moments where there's something undescribable that's happening. And even now I'm having trouble describing it and I can describe to you what happened, but analyzing it. Um, and it's just, I think those are the moments where you really, in this case with adults with Down syndrome, I think there's always this curiosity about, you know, how does their, how do their minds work? You know, how do they connect A to B? And there's certain perceptions that are different. You know, depth perception is very challenging for a person with Down syndrome, distance, time. And there was just something really fascinating going on, which only because we were doing verite filmmaking where we were just sitting back and waiting and watching, were we able to capture that. Um, and, it, and it helped give the film an arc. The documentary for the most part well, I, th I suppose to a film in general, the fundraising process and just seeking support within the industry happens while you're making the films, while you're developing the film. Um, there isn't the luxury of waiting until the end because 
you need the financing place. And it's not just about the financing. If in participating in labs and in different programs, being a part of grants, particularly for documentary, it helps build legitimacy for the project in the industry. So with Monica and David, uh, after filming the initial chunk of footage around the wedding itself, I took a few months off and, and worked with an editor and we shaped a development trailer, which was a nine minute sample. And that's what I started chopping around. And I ended up doing a program called Tribeca All Access, which was run by the Tribeca Institute. And basically they would bring in filmmakers who had projects in varying stages and help prep you for pitching. And then you have one-on-one -on -one industry meetings. And while that was happening through a friend who had worked at HBO, uh, I submitted everything as well to them and was very lucky that they were quite interested. So I actually had a first look agreement with Monica and David, which was some seed money and basically a first right of refusal with HBO. But still had to go out there and raise the rest, make the film, and then come back with the finished film. And I did what a lot of doc documentary filmmakers do, apply to grants, got um, some really great support from Chicken and Egg Pictures, the, the Fledgling Fund. I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but it was kind of cobbled together through the process. And once I was fairly late in the edit process, uh, HBO came on board and, and bought the film. So. We finished paying for the making of the film and for our festival run through through the selling of the film with HBO. And with Monica and David, something which I don't think really happens anymore just because the landscape has changed so much, but we were very blessed. Our world premiere was in Amsterdam at the International Documentary Festival Amsterdam. And it's a really fantastic marketplace for docs. And since we already had US in place, I was able to focus on international and we, got a lot of um, international sales out of that. So we ended up, Monica and David actually aired in, I think it was 33 countries and it was um, distributed in 17 different languages over the course of a year or two. So that, but that's not gonna happen. That doesn't happen with most films. That was just, it was a pretty incredible, magical, unique experience.